We're not what? seeing those layers uh -oh. we saw, right? Okay. Which are more like channel. Oh, and it's getting peaty going upwards. So we, we have it. <laughs> Came right off. There you go. Stick it on another finger. Okay, yeah. okay so we, we got yeah, into this well layered stuff okay. before and and we just didn't quite reach this soil. So this 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 one's from around the year four hundred. Okay, and this is this is um, there are two there are two buried soils between this one and the one in 1700 that we blew through, and and one of them is obliterated at this place by oxygen. The other is barely visible, um, but but you can see this pretty clearly. Yeah? <coughs> That's your S layer. That's yeah, that's layer. S. Mm -hmm. So the other was a smaller tsunami or less there impactful? Less no, I don't think, I don't see a clear evidence for a tsunami here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless unless you want to call this 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 mud with the silt layers in it a, uh, a tsunami I deposit. I don't know if it is. Mm -hmm. but, but the dependable thing here is the land level change. Mm -hmm. You can, you don't have to be near a sand source, especially, oh, when you start dealing with the buried forests. That's a nightmare because for the tsunami there's a lot of resistance. Yeah. So All that understory yeah. to go through. So so along the Copalis you can test this a bit because the Copalis today is about where it was in seventeen hundred as judged from where the the tree roots jut out. And and you work away from the bank and you you see the the tsunami the seventeen hundred tsunami deposit as a coating on the bank, almost like a natural levee deposit. Huh. And then and then you move you move away more than 10, 15 meters and you lose it. So for you it's easier if you have buried marshes than buried forests because the marshes are so precisely defined. Because yeah, but of, the forests are great because of what you yeah. can date them. Okay, I understand. The two together work together. I mean the two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the oxygen combines with the carbon, is that what goes on there? To obliterate you said the oxygen oh, here, can obliterate. Here the deal is that, um, that that there's 90 feet of soft mud under the center of this valley. Yes. And and this and if you work towards the center of the valley, tracing these soils and outcrop, you, what you see is that all of them, the one in 1700 even, um, tilts downward towards the center of the valley, and the older soils tilt progressively more. And what it means is that they're they're more. There's more space between them over there, mm -hmm. and the older soils are protected from the oxygen of the next soil by the way they get pulled apart over the soft valley fill. It's just a, a steady static compaction mm -hmm. that takes place in the middle. So, so a soil that over here is barely visible, uh, over there it has growth position pickleweed. Uh -huh. Stems like I, uh -huh. the last time your sister took uh -huh. me to 42nd Street Cafe, they served pickle pickleweed. Weed, okay? uh -huh. So, so there, there are there are pickleweed stems over there from the year 700, roughly. That they are in growth position uh -huh. that are preserved beautifully there. Over here, you can barely recognize the soil, mm -hmm. and it all has to do with with they're being pulled apart by this by this static compaction. Uh -huh. So you play you play have to play those games to get your so your. You map the things out. Exactly. So you look at a marsh area, you might pick a uniform larger marsh for coring as opposed to a narrow place, like because it might have less impact from changes in that static position. I don't know. Well, this is just accident. Oh, we were just, we were just we were just mapping this thing oh. just to map it. Oh. And and then realized that oh, this this really helps. Oh. And and so um, yeah. Do you have a 90 foot extension for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't buy. It doesn't help you. Below, this is this is it. The recorder, when the when this marsh was built, the recording system got turned on here. Okay, but before that, it was some kind of channel or tide flat, and the land could go ahead and drop five or ten feet, whatever it wanted to do, and the environment wouldn't change enough that it's easy to recognize. 
Where so is there is this? no more this after one. that one. You can't find any more layers after that one ever. Not here. Yeah. Not at this place. And it just has to do with the rec when the recorder turns on. So, so um, just downstream from the South Bend Palix Road bridge, um, there's a there's a place that's it's marked Meander Cutoff or something on your map, um, where one of the first times I came out here. Uh, we parked ourselves there with this this kind of device, and we pushed more than 20 feet, and we hit nine buried saws. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> you know, but whereas here you can hear the most you're going to be able to recognize is at this place is four. And it doesn't mean those are those earlier catastrophes didn't happen. There just wasn't just anything. There wasn't any grass see. grown or yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 What about turbidite records? The turbidite records go even farther back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turbidite for the but Professor Phipps, with the, the uh, pontoon sites at Grays Harbor, oh. 